All right, welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Ventrude, and we're gonna be talking about building systems and processes, which in my opinion is the most important fundamental thing that you need to do and master to be able to scale your business to the next level. Okay, before we get into Lucidchart and why I think it's the most legendary tool on earth to be able to build systems and, and good processes, I first wanna talk about the two types of builders that there are on earth. Now I'm really gonna generalize here, but in most cases from what I've seen, there's the beginner builders, which is usually just entrepreneurs in general who build one dimensional systems or processes. And these people are normally, you know, just using like a Google doc or a Google sheet, uh, like a Trello card checklist. And it's usually very text oriented. Maybe there's a video that explains how to do each of these items on the checklist, but that's about it. Okay. It's just that it's like a SOP. It's just a Google doc, whatever. Okay, cool. I know how to do this process. That's a beginner builder. And we're gonna talk about why that is not ideal. Then there's an advanced builder who this is usually someone who's more of an engineer. They're not so much an, an entrepreneur and it's very rare for entrepreneurs to have this engineer like thinking and mindset, but this is someone who's going to build a three to four dimensional process or system. It's going to still have that checklist and that in-depth video like the beginner builder, but it has a much more bird's eye view level with things that allow the person to look at that system to understand it at a much greater depth, which we're going to get into. So stick with me for five to 10 minutes. And if you're a beginner builder, I'm gonna show you how to become an advanced builder. Um, and also the benefits of this are pretty obvious. Your systems are going to last longer. Your systems are going to be more reliable. The people that are going to be trained on your systems will have less questions and they'll better understand how your systems actually work. Last but not least, this is the most important and underrated one by building systems using a tool like Lucidchart, I'm gonna show you how you can better understand how to troubleshoot and understand that or find the bottleneck within your system so you can take it to the next level. Right. So let's get right into this. Now this is our agency's Lucidchart that we use to explain our agency framework, our digital brain. This is everything we do from steps, step by step, uh, how we take a client and we get them results in our business. It's the entire process at a what you can see as a bird's eye view okay now this is important not only because it it it, it doesn't go into the weeds but it allows someone to easily look at this page and understand all the pro the, the steps that we go through to get a client from they have no results to they have a lot of results and they're really happy with our our service that we're providing for them okay now there's four different kind of dimensions or levels, if you will. The first is just like the super high level. What is this process about? It's about getting clients results. Okay. It's about client success. So how does client success begin? Well, it begins with onboarding. Okay. Now onboarding, now we're into a new phase. So you can see this is basically the level two phase and this is phases. This is basically the name of the system or process or the project or the outcome, the desired outcome. This is the phases that we go through. These are the work packages that we have. So the first thing is we have a work package for the onboarding, which is Trello and Sheets set up. So when we onboard a client, we're going to get them set up in Trello and the Sheets. Now, this is irrelevant to you, I know, but I'm just explaining how this diagram is laid out so you can understand the importance of this. Now, beyond this work package, this is, again, a high-level description of a bunch of different line items or things that need to get done here. So the first thing that needs to get done is we need to set up the billing for the client. Okay. We need to obviously get them into our billing system. Then we need to set up their folders within our Google shared drive. And then we need to do a bunch of other stuff. So these are verb oriented things. You can see this starts with a, actually, I don't know if it's verb is the right word. I think it is verb, but anyways, uh, this is set up billing. Okay. Set up folders, input, target ACOS, set up draft, segment, approve, draft, approve. So these are action oriented words and this is very specific. So this is actually like a how to more of like, get this done. This, this work package doesn't have any sort of verbiage in it. It's just like a description of a bunch of stuff that needs to get done within the work package. Okay. Same thing with the phases. So at this dimension, this is as far deep as it gets. Okay. Right here. I don't go into how you actually set up the billing. It's just a high level description of setting up the billing. But if I click on this, you're going to see, it says click to follow to external link. It'll take me to a video that actually shows me how to do this specific process. Now, when I click on this video, or this link, sorry, it's going to take me to something that looks like this. Okay. This is a Trello card. And at the top of this Trello card, you're going to see this video. Okay. This is a video that explains how to go through this checklist. It's basically a video of me going through this checklist click by click 
so that the person who is new to this process can understand how to do it. Now remember how I said that most people are beginner builders, they're level one builders, they don't really know, understand engineering what very well. Well, this is typically what they do. They'll typically build a checklist like this with a video. And this is great, okay? There's nothing wrong with this when you're starting out. When you're starting out and you're scrappy and you need to just get them systems building, this is great. This is what you should do. And to be honest, this is what I actually start with when I start building a system and a process is I just brain dump something into a Trello card or a Google Doc. And then I try to condense the information into something like this, a digital brain. Condensing the information to this view is extremely important because when someone is given a 30 different checklists and SOPs like this, okay, they do not really understand how everything in interconnects, okay, because uses, again, this is usually what people do. They'll just say, they'll just have like 30 different Google Sheets or Google Docs. Um, or 30 different Trello cards with all sorts of different processes. And these processes explain the entire business. They explain all these things. Again, if I was a level one builder, I would just have, this is, you can, this is probably like 22 like Loom videos with 22 checklists. But if I just have these checklists, it doesn't explain how everything interconnects. This explains how everything interconnects. So thinking more like an engineer, this is more of a flowchart process, their system that shows how everything interconnects within the system, okay? How all the processes interconnect. And this is more or less like the system, if you will, for, for client success. Again, there could be a system for marketing. There could be a system for sales. There could be a system for support. There could be systems for many different things. The point is, is this is just our operations system. You can see that right here in the top left-hand corner. So now that you understand the key differences between kind of like what a level one builder is and a level two builder is, let's just get into the specifics of this stuff. So at the top left corner here, we put in uh, basically what this system is about. Okay, this is about operations. Digital brain is just a fancy word that was created uh, to explain kind of what this is. It's just the name of what this is. Some people call it an agency framework. Um, some people just call it a system. I like to call it a digital brain because that's essentially what we're doing is we're extracting the information that is in, in our heads. We're putting it into a uh, one page lucid chart, flow chart, um, building it into a system. And then just basically now it's a digital brain because it's in the cloud, so to speak. Now the color coding system is at the, at this level here at the activity level, which is the fourth level. So again, the level three is work packages. Level four is the activity, which is where we get into like checklist items, things that need to actually get completed. Um, this level, we have it color coded to show which person does this specific task or activity, if you will. So the AEAM is just account executive account manager. These are the people who uh, work with the clients and, and communicate with the clients. The account coordinator is our offshore team. Um, we used to we used to name call them virtual assistants, but they do a lot more than just like a virtual assistant work. Um, they handle a lot of the admin stuff and, and, and stuff that essentially can be outsourced and, and uh, the account managers and the account executives shouldn't be doing. So they are amazing. You can see they have a lot of stuff that they have to do in this process. The account, or sorry, the AS is just automation specialist and then uh, this is Alex and we only have one thing that he does specifically, which is actually the billing setup. This is supposed to be purple. So that is the color coding system, which is important because again, let me step back here. When we go on an offsite or when you go on an offsite with, let's just say your leadership team or just with your entire team in general. And the, the usually the big question, at least when you're talking about increasing efficiency and operations and making people's lives easier is what is the bottleneck? Okay. What, where, where's the big bottleneck? And there's bottlenecks in all different sorts of areas of your business. There's bottlenecks in operations. There's bottlenecks in sales. There's bottlenecks in marketing. Focus on the, like each of these categories. So if we go to an offsite, I kind of want to identify what is the top, the biggest bottleneck in operations. How do we do that? Well, you could just sit around a table, shoot the shit for lack of a better word, and talk about what you think and what you feel is the bottleneck. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be a lot of intuition when you're thinking about a bottleneck and when you're trying to figure out what is the biggest like bottleneck in the system. But it's much, much, much easier to identify the bottleneck in the system when you have things laid out in a flowchart like this. 
And it's much easier to identify like just drastic innovation because when you see something like this, like when I see something like this, I immediately know the next step, the big next step. And it's building a software that can automate pretty much this entire process here, this whole thing that I'm highlighting with the click of a button. And very difficult to do. There is still gonna be some manual input, but I know for sure that if we have the right developers, we can definitely build a piece of technology that will be able to remove 80 to 90% of the human interactions with these processes in pretty much, yeah, like I said, the click of a button. So I, I, I wouldn't, I, I potentially may not be able to see that possibility if I just had a, a million checklists in a Google doc with like 33 Loom videos. Do you know what I mean? So that's the beauty of having this thing laid out in a bird's eye view that allows you to see how everything interconnects. Now, moving forward, we also have a few of these red sheets at the top. These red sheets uh, take us to links that take us to Google Sheets that store very important information that has a lot of different complexities to it that help us better understand different elements of this, um, of this process. So there's something in here called a success sheet that we set up when we set up these sheets. Uh, there's a template to this sheet that people would click on and they can go see that. The folder structure is located over here. How do we actually uh, store our client's information in a Google Drive? Again, you need consistency when it comes to stuff like this because if you just sign a client and you decide to create some random Google Sheets and then you decide to do this and do that and there's no process and there's no system, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna have any consistency in the results that you get for your clients. You're not gonna be able to productize your service. You're not going to be able to deliver consistent results. That's what it comes down to, okay? When you go to a barber shop and when you get a haircut, let's just say you've been getting a haircut with the same, with the same stylist for like four years. And then all of a sudden, for, for whatever reason, the dude just like shaves your head bald. You're gonna be pissed. You're gonna be like, what the like F, right? You're gonna be like, what in the world is going on here? Okay, now that's just a very extreme example of a system breaking down, okay? That person who has cut your hair very well for let's just say four years, all of a sudden the system breaks. That normally doesn't happen. If someone can cut your hair perfectly for four years, they likely are very talented and the system for a stylist, this is kind of a bad analogy because they don't really have a system. It's more or less just hand movements. But the point is is that it, what I'm getting at here is that if, if, if the haircut is not consistent, you're never gonna go back to that person. You're never gonna go back to that business. If the results with your client are great one quarter and they're terrible the next quarter, what do you think is gonna happen? They're gonna leave you because it's you can't have that much inconsistency. You need to have consistency at a level that is ideally way above your competition, okay? Again, same thing, this is actually a better analogy. If you go to a, a, a there's a, there's a, there's a, smoothie shop downstairs they have this amazing smoothie but like 20 percent of the time for some reason it's just different it's just not the same and i don't know how they can mess that up because there's ingredients making a smoothie should be the exact same every single time but maybe it's just something as simple as they put the bananas in the blender and the bananas weren't frozen and because they're not frozen it changes the texture of the smoothie there's, there's such simple, minute details that make such a big difference when it comes to delivering your client the results that you need to have really good systems, otherwise shit just falls through the cracks. I don't even think our systems are amazing. I think our systems can be 10 times better. I think I'll always think that for the rest of time. This is naturally how I think. I, I usually never think something is great. I always think it's like good and it can always be way better. This is how I think personally. I always kind of look at the things that are not that great and that can be improved. Um, anyways, the point is is that Having these systems laid out, it gives you consistency. And when you have consistency, you're gonna be able to retain clients for a much longer time period. So that is how we use Lucidchart on a high level. Now we also use Trello, and that is where we do the level one beginner building type stuff, where we have the checklists, where we have the Loom video. So again, when we click on things like this, it, it will either take us to a Google Sheet or a, a checklist in Trello or a simply a Loom video that'll walk us through how to do this, this specific process. Um, and that's really it. That there's, there's nothing else to this, okay? So don't do just level one. Just step it up, use a tool like Loose Chart, pay the 30, 40 bucks a month, whatever it is. I don't get a referral fee. I'm just sharing this information for free. 
and build some more advanced systems that allow you to understand how everything interconnects. That way your team, when they're learning your systems and processes, they can better understand where the bottlenecks are. They can better tell you, hey, this is where the bottleneck is, right here. This process right here, this, this, this process mixed data thing is a, is a nightmare, okay? I, I, I hate it, it's terrible. This thing always takes me like six hours, perfect. I, now I understand that that's the bottleneck. Um, and a more advanced system that you can use is something like this. This is called BPMN, Business Process Notate, Management Notation. I don't know I have the exact acronym, but uh, it's a bit too advanced in my opinion. I don't really like it, but some people really live and die by this. I think if you run an advertising agency, you don't really need something like this. But essentially there's layers and at the high level you have, these are like swim lanes and then there's pools. The pool is, um, this entire thing is an audit process. So what happens is when we do an audit, there's a survey that is received. That's an email that enters our email that comes from the prospect, okay, because obviously someone applies on our website. Then we receive a survey. Then someone's gonna qualify that survey, okay? If they're, if they're only doing like $20,000 a year in sales, we're not gonna work with them. So they'll get rejected. If they're not qualified, we're gonna cancel the call and we'll send them an email back and say, hey, you're not qualified. If they are qualified, there's usually a one to four day delay because we're gonna get, they're gonna book a discovery call and that discovery call uh, is gonna happen. Our calendar setting doesn't allow them to book it one to four days out, et cetera. Now, doing the discovery call is a pretty, it, it, it's, a, it's a more in-depth process. So if you, un, if you unhide that, it will show you how to do the discovery call in this process down here. So BPMN, it looks more complicated. It is more complicated. Does it simplify things? I mean, it really allows you to look at it and really understand what the hell is going on uh, to a much greater degree than this, okay? But I don't think it's worth it right now for the level that our business is at. I think if you're doing maybe a million a month, if you're an eight-figure business and you got 50 plus employees, go for it um, in an advertising agency. I can't speak about other business models, but uh, for now, I think something like this is very sustainable and will last until probably around eight figures, something like that. So anyways, we'll see how this goes. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button below and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I have spoken about this many times in many different videos. Keep, people keep requesting more information about it. I, I don't know what else to tell you guys, to be honest. I think I think this is like gonna be my last video talking about Lucidchart because I think I've told you guys everything that I can possibly tell you about this thing. So yeah, I, I don't know. If I miss something, let me know. I'm, I'm kind of like, damn, what else do I talk about when it comes to this stuff, all right? Thanks for watching this, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button. It would make my year, okay? Ciao.